Hi there, my name is Dr. Hilary Booth and I'm a naturopathic doctor and welcome to my video blog. This week we're going to be starting a new series all about autoimmune conditions called Stop Attacking Yourself. Today we're going to focus in on one aspect of treating autoimmune conditions that I really hone in on when I treat autoimmunity in my practice and that's treating inflammation. So autoimmune conditions are actually a really broad spectrum of conditions. Everything from rheumatoid arthritis, which is joint pain, uh, through until some digestive diseases like Crohn's and colitis, right through to skin diseases like eczema and psoriasis are all under this umbrella of autoimmunity. Now, now, the thing that they all have in common, despite being so different in the way they manifest, is that they all happen because the body has started to attack itself. Um, now, when the body attacks itself, we also get lots of inflammation, and that's why as a naturopathic doctor, treating inflammation is always a huge part of treating autoimmune disease. So today we're going to talk about the five ways that I look at the body and treat uh, inflammation in autoimmune conditions. So first, let's talk about why is there inflammation in autoimmune disease? So in each of these autoimmune conditions, we've mentioned that um, the body is attacking itself. But this is because the body's immune system has gone into overdrive. So normally our immune system goes about its day-to-day -day activities, building more soldiers as we need them to attack things like bacteria and viruses, things like that in the body that shouldn't be there. Now in autoimmune circumstances, the body's immune system has gone into overdrive and produced far too many of these immune soldiers. And that might sound like not the end of the world, but what happens with each of these immune soldiers is they, in turn, release um, different molecules, some of which are called cytokines, that will cause inflammation wherever they go. Now, in a non-autoimmune circumstance, these inflammation-causing um, molecules, things like cytokine, are actually a good thing because they act as sort of a signal to tell the body, hey, we need some attention here. We need some help in order to uh, fix this problem. Maybe it is attack this bacteria. Maybe this is heal this wound. Whatever it may be, that inflammation is usually helpful. But in an autoimmune circumstance, because we have so much of these immune soldiers swimming around in the body um, and so much inflammation as a result, uh, long-term amounts of this inflammation leads to basically chronic issues over the whole body, and that's where we start to see disease states. So, how do we treat this inflammation in autoimmune conditions? The first way that I do this is by removing inflammatory foods. So 70% of our immune system starts in the gut. So you can imagine in someone with autoimmune conditions, we do a lot of work on the gut health. So, um, the immune hyperreactivity can often be a result of the gut going into overdrive and producing too many immune soldiers in response to foods rather than in response to things that we're looking to like bacteria and viruses. So what happens is when we are stressed out, when we're on certain medications um, and when we're eating inflammatory foods, our gut lining that should look nice and tight like that starts to loosen up and when that happens foods sneak through that shouldn't into the bloodstream and our immune system sees those food proteins and goes, hey, this really shouldn't be here, we should attack it. So you start building those immune soldiers up in response to food proteins and your body starts attacking those food proteins. Some of the key culprits are dairy and gluten and eggs, um, but there are some other foods that often are really inflammatory in, um, in autoimmune conditions and those ones include foods from the nightshade family. So that's tomatoes, potatoes, uh, eggplant and peppers, including cayenne pepper and bell peppers. So when we take out these inflammatory foods from the diet, what can we then do is we heal up that gut. So we bring that gut lining back together, um, in store, restore its integrity. We give us some probiotics that are helpful strains for calming down that immune system. Um, and then again, of course, we remove those inflammatory foods. And what happens is your immune system stops overproducing all those extra soldiers and your immune system calms down over time. And that can help to reduce the impact that we're having with whole body inflammation um, that's ended up being caused by foods. The second thing that we do to reduce our inflammation in autoimmune conditions is we reduce our stress. So as I've said many times before, if you watch my video blogs, um, when the body is under stress, it releases, there's a chronic inflammation over the whole body. Now it's important to realize that your body cannot tell the difference between different types of stress. So your cell phone ringing off its hook or your boss walking by your desk uh, is interpreted the same way as you're running from a lion or you're in a war or you're in a famine, something extremely stressful um, sort of that, that's affecting our basic needs. Your body can't tell the difference between that and other day-to-day -day stressors that um, may not be so profoundly life and death. 
But regardless, your body releases all these stress hormones into the system and these stress hormones cause inflammation. So what we need to do is we need to understand what's causing stress and you may not, under, you may not realize um, that certain things are stressful for your body. Things like not eating on a regular schedule, things like not sleeping enough. If you're getting fewer than six hours of sleep per night, um, then that is causing your body stress. If you are exercising too much, that can also be interpreted as stress. So there's lots of different ways that you can reduce the overall stress in your life. Um, then it may not be in the traditional sense that you've always thought about stress in terms of work stress or home life stress. Um, and what we do in autoimmunity is we make sure that we're coping with stress really well. So we're sleeping well, we're eating well, we're exercising a good amount, not too much, not too little. Um, but then we're also doing things like yoga and deep breathing and relaxation techniques to bring down your stress overall. The third thing that I do in autoimmune conditions to reduce your inflammation is I address environmental toxin exposure. So there's a well-established connection between uh, environmental toxins, including heavy metals, and the relationship with causing autoimmune diseases or contributing to their intensity um, because inflammation can happen in the body as a result of toxic exposure. So toxins include things like lead, cadmium, mercury, parabens, phthalates. I have other videos that you can go and watch all about environmental toxins and how to get them out of your body. But as a starting point, to reduce your overall toxin and exposure, start by looking at your day-to-day -day life. What are you putting on your body? What are you putting in your body? Your shampoo, your soap, your creams, your, um, your laundry detergent, your dish soap, all these things contain toxins that you're constantly being exposed to. So start as you run out of one thing, find something that's more natural instead to replace it. And at, over time, you'll eventually um, notice that your life becomes a little bit less toxin um, burdened. I'm actually gonna do a whole other talk about heavy metal induced autoimmunity and the um, connection between that, so stay tuned for that aspect of um, our, our video talks about autoimmune conditions. My number four uh, way that we reduce inflammation in autoimmune conditions is we use anti-inflammatory supplements. So there are tons of anti-inflammatory herbs and supplements that are out there that help to reduce inflammation. Things like curcumin, boswellia, um, romania, devil's claw, fish oil, there are tons of things. But the thing I want to highlight today, especially in autoimmune disease, is that you have to use the right um, dose and the right form and for the right time period in autoimmune disease to see any change. Um, a lot of, uh, one really good example that I see is turmeric. So turmeric is something that we use in our cooking, but the amount that we use in cooking is not going to be nearly enough to have a discernible effect in someone with autoimmune disease. So we take an extract of that, the curcumin extract, um, and we have to make sure we're getting that at the correct dose and in the correct form. And when you look at the studies, the curcumin actually um, is absorbed into the bloodstream and is active in reducing those inflammatory cytokines for a certain period of time and then it dies down. So we need to be dosing at the correct time during the day and then we need to be taking it for a long enough period in order to reduce inflammation overall. So this is one example, but the same thing goes for all of our anti-inflammatory herbs and supplements that you might consider using um, in autoimmune conditions. So talk to your naturopathic doctor about that before you start any other protocols. And my number five, and this is probably the most important thing that you need to reduce inflammation in autoimmune disease, is time and patience. Um, by the time autoimmune conditions have gotten to the point where your immune system has started attacking its own body and there's all that inflammation going on chronically over the whole body, um, this has been happening for a long time. So you can imagine that overnight it doesn't just go away. So we need up to six months of eating really well, uh, being on a good supplement regimen, reducing your stress, and um, addressing any of these toxic exposure things to really see massive changes in your overall health. So don't give up, keep persevering, stay with those supplement schedules and your diet schedules that your naturopath has given you, um, and give your body and your immune system a chance to return back to normal. Um, patience and perseverance are the toughest part of this whole thing, but they are the most important when you go through reducing inflammation and autoimmunity. So just to recap my five things that you need, number one is removing the inflammatory foods and healing up the gut. Number two is reducing your stress and looking at those other things that might be stressing out your body that you may not have thought about before. Number three is addressing environmental toxic exposure. These could be your personal care products or heavy metal poisoning, which we're going to talk about at a later time. Uh, number four is using anti-inflammatory
anti-inflammatory supplements at the right dose and for the right period of time. And number five is to have lots and lots of patience and give it enough time. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'd be happy to answer those for you. If you'd like to book an appointment with me, you can do so at our website at www.derearwellness.com or by phoning our clinic. Thank you so much for watching everybody and have a great day.